Hello Brothers of Christ, just wanted to make a quick video, uh, just like a little bit of an update video to the study we did about am I a Christian, should I, should I deny being a Christian, okay? I had a couple brethren that were disagreeing with me and I just want to make a video to see that, that don't fall into this trap, okay? Um, in the King James Bibles, the word Christian, the whole point of that study was the word Christian is mentioned three times. And I didn't make it quite as clear as I should have made it, Brother Jesus Christ. Maybe because it didn't really hit on to me until I started getting a lot of slack and people really fighting back on it. That people tend to really focus hardcore on who called them Christians and saying that Christian is a derogatory term. Okay? First time Christian is mentioned, it says uh, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now I got into it with the brother in Christ and he kept, the first thing he told me is he said they were called Christians first at Antioch and they be in the lost world. And I said, and that's, I'm just saying, just in that sense that he used, uh, they would be the, the people being called Christians. They were called Christians. He just said they were called Christians. But I said, but what does the Bible actually say? And I showed him the scriptures and it says saying, first it says saying, saying, wow, I was adding to scripture. I wasn't saying, I mean, if you make a mistake, brother says Christ, we make mistakes. There's times I misquote scripture. It happens, okay? I'm not saying you have to be perfect in every time you quote scripture, but when you get shown that you're quoting the scripture wrong, I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The word of God says this, okay? If I, if I say something wrong, humble yourself and repent. I said it wrong, you know, according to the scriptures. But it says the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And then he starts saying, but, 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 then he started doubling down and said, but, but in context, it's, it's the lost world. I said, can you prove it? He couldn't. According to the scriptures, could you prove that it's the lost world? He couldn't. And every man that's, that's tried to email me or make comments under that video, they'll come out with feelings and opinions and say, this is how it is. But anybody can say this is how it is. Someone can say that a donkey was speaking to him. Like in the Old Testament, where the, the donkey speaking with man's voice, God had a donkey, donkey speaking with man's voice, and they're the ones that were calling them Christians. You say, that's a little radical. Well, anybody can make it out to be and say whatever you want when you start adding to it, when you start adding to this book and subtracting from this book. And that was what that warning was that I gave at the beginning of the, of the uh, study, Brothers says Christ, is that, Add thou not to his word, yes, he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. But here's the thing, don't get stuck, brothers and sisters, that study was not about getting stuck on who was calling them Christians. It wasn't to get stuck on, on Christian, oh, is it a derogatory term, or is it a term that, because there's a good argument on both sides, where a Christian, uh, you have a disciple, a disciple being called Christians first. What do disciples do? They preach the gospel. So there's the lost world doing it. That's a good argument for the lost world. Then you have King Agrippa, which is a lost man, calling, uh, saying that Paul, he's insinuating Paul's a Christian, and he wants to make him a Christian, uh, King Agrippa make himself a Christian also. He's a lost man. So he's a good argument for that. But then you have uh, on the side that disciples also preach the word of God to saved sinners. Paul did. We got the Pauline epistles. And then you get to Peter, and Peter is saying that he's using these group of people that are suffering for Jesus Christ and calling them a Christian. So now you have a saved man using the word Christian and calling people Christian. Hmm. See, there's a good argument on both sides. But here's the thing, brothers and Christ. I had to draw the line when I was discussing it with these brothers in Christ, and I said, listen, I'm getting drawn into it. That's not what's important. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when you watch that study, if you need to re-watch that study, please re-watch that study and with the right heart. There's some brethren that they saw that I'm saying Christian and all of a sudden their heart closes off, hardened heart, and they put up a shield, they put up a wall, and they missed the whole point of that study. God doesn't tell us that who called them Christians, I believe, for a reason. Who called them Christians first in Antioch? He said that for a reason. Why? Because we're not supposed to be focusing on who called them Christians. We're not supposed to be focusing, because the Bible doesn't say it was a derogatory term. Like I said, all this stuff is just being grabbed out of thin air. I said, I can just prove this easy, chapter and verse, where it says Christian is a derogatory term. They say, well, Paul never used the word Christian. I said, yeah, but 
when they were called Christians, because they said, but Paul might not have denied being a Christian, but Paul never affirmed it. Did you hear what they just said? He never denied it. It's called a circular argument. If I say he didn't deny it, they'll say, well, he didn't affirm it. And that's a circular argument that nobody can win. Uh, the people who are called Christians first in our, at, at, uh, called Christians first at Antioch, where does it say they denied it? Where does it say they affirmed it? It's a circular argument. Nobody can win that argument, and that's what Satan wants. He loves circular arguments. Now here, I'm getting to the point, brothers of Christ. People missed, out, missed a little bit on that study. You don't want to know why? Because why, uh, what they were, I mean, who called them Christian? And whether it's a derogatory term, that's not what's important. You can miss the boat. I remember a great, a great Bible preacher, uh, he once said that you can think that you're getting things right, but you can still miss the boat. You can still miss what God really wanted for us to know. And you know what God wanted us to know when it comes to the title Christian? He wanted us to know the most important part is why they were called Christians. Brothers and sisters of Christ, why they were called Christians. And that's what that whole study was. Because today, you got people calling themselves Christians that aren't. Calling each other Christians that aren't. Calling false religions Christianity when it's not. Why? Because they are focused on the, the who calls people Christians and whether it's a, a badge of honor or it's a derogatory term because that's what they're focused on because they've changed everything. They're not focused on what God wants us focused on. Why were they called Christians? So here's my best advice for you, brother Jesus Christ. When you come across a brother or someone you think is saved, might be a little bit messed up, might be a lot messed up in these last days, the falling away, but anytime they go attacking using the word Christian, all you have to do is ask them. Ask them, why were they called Christians? Each time Christian is used, it's used on saved sinners, something they can't seem to understand. These hardcore, I hate the term Christian, I'm going to deny being a Christian. The whole point of that study was every time it's used, they're not denying being a Christian. They might not have called themselves that, but when the lost world looks at them, and there's three definitions given, in Christ Jesus, a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're suffering for Jesus Christ. That's what we need to get out of it. That's what's important. If you get called a Christian, are you getting called a Christian properly? Do you meet the requirements for why, why they were called Christians? Because only saved people were called Christians, not false converts, not wolves in sleep's clothing. Every time it mentions it, it's talking about saved sinners. And the important part, brothers and Christ, is why they were called Christians. Why were they called Christians first in Antioch? Because they were disciples of Jesus Christ. Those disciples were going out and preaching the gospel, and they were preaching the word to the body of Christ. Are you doing that, brothers and Christ? That was the whole point of that study. Are you doing that? Are you going out and preaching the gospel? Are you laying gospel tracts places? When doors open, do you have your testimony ready to go to give your testimony to the lost world so you can lead someone to Christ? You have a brother that's becoming part of the falling away. That's the whole point. I believe that's the whole point of Paul writing letters, trying to make sure that the brethren stay in a standing point and don't fall to the left and don't fall to the right. He talked about a man, I forgot the man's name, that having departed from me, having loved this present world. He worried about resurrecting the old man. So when he's preaching, do you have your testimonies, like your life as a Christian, because you can have testimonies not just at salvation, that's, that's number one. But you can also have testimonies, brothers and sisters Christ, in your walk with the Lord, where you failed Him, where you were able to overcome, where God helped you overcome things in this world, to stay on that straight and narrow path, so you can encourage a brother or sister in Christ to stay on that narrow path. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you in Christ Jesus? Okay, when you're newly saved, I doubted my salvation a little bit when I was newly saved, but I got to a point where, where God changed my life. I, I, I pass those tests when it comes to being in Christ Jesus, like I said in that study, okay? That was the whole point. Why were they called it? Because they were in Christ. Are you in Christ? Because there's a lot of people who are fakes and frauds. They've been deceived. I was one of them. I was a false convert for most of my uh, early life. 
I was deceived. I wasn't in Christ. If somebody would have walked up to me and actually spelled out to me what it means to be in Christ Jesus, I would have had to tell them, that's not me. That's the whole point of examine yourself. Examine yourself, brothers and sisters of Christ. See if I can get this up. But um, There's two verses that I used for myself, first and foremost. Remember, brothers and sisters of Christ, the Word of God is a double-edged sword. Why? Because it cuts me who's preaching it first, then you. That's how it works. Be careful of those preachers where it doesn't dare cut them, it only cuts you. That's not a good preacher. Okay. But, I put on here 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. All right. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. And then Psalms 26, 2. I love this verse too. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. God's going to examine you. God's going to prove you. Try my reins and my heart. My heart. That was the whole point of that video is for you to be able to examine yourself and if you see that there's hardship in your life, God is proving you, saying, hey, you're not quite lining up. You need to come back from the left. You need to come back from the right. You need to line up. Are you suffering as a Christian or are you suffering because of this world? That's the third time the word Christian is used. It's used towards saved sinners. All right? The lost world, these fakes and these frauds aren't suffering for Jesus Christ. It's not talking about false converts. It's talking about saved sinners. They're suffering because of the flesh. They're suffering because of the world. There's some people who go out of their way to get to suffer. And I talked about that. They go out of their way to purposely get, you know, per, uh, persecuted. If you're standing for the truth, you really don't have to. But the whole point, brothers and Christ, just for this update, is that when you go to watch that video again, remember, it's the why that matters. And I probably didn't make that that important. It's the why they were called Christians that matter. Not that they were who called them Christians. Or that they were called Christians. They could have been called lazy. They could have been called stupid. They could have been called all kinds of things. They were called Christians. Why? And like I said, with those people that just come out hardcore, they're anti-Christian. They don't like the word. They even go as far as to deny being a Christian. Which Paul never did. Peter never did. None of the... Because the, the, it says the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. None of them did. Luke, John, Silas, Timothy. They were called it, but where does it say they denied it? But this big movement of denying being a Christian. And I said in my response, and I stand by it, that if I get called a Christian, Brother Smith, I didn't say this in that video. If I get called a Christian, I'm going to respond like Paul did. I'm just going to keep preaching the truth to him. I'm going to continue preaching the gospel to him. That's what Paul did. He didn't deny it. He, got, he, he, he doubled down on what he was saying and what he was preaching. That's how I'm going to react. Now, if they claim to be a Christian, what am I going to do? I'm going to ask them, what is that? And I guarantee you that 90 to 95% of the time, I'm going to get this worldly definition. What is that? Someone who goes to a Babel building? Someone who's part of an organized religion? But that's not the Bible definition. It's not the Bible definition, brothers and sisters Christ. It's not. I would ask them, I'd say, and then I would show them the Bible definition. Are you in Christ Jesus? Has made unto us wisdom, uh, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Are you in Christ Jesus? I'd ask them, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? And what a disciple is, is God's in charge. He's the boss. He commands you obey. Preaching the gospel and being a living witness as well as a verbal witness. And how you help the body of Christ out by holding them accountable to a perfect written word. Do you suffer for Jesus Christ or are you suffering because of the world? Because you're worldly and you're sin and wickedness. That's how I would go about it, brothers and sisters. That's me. You don't have to necessarily go out, out it, go over it the way I did, but you should go over it at least to the point, like I said, with Paul. He doubled down on the, on the gospel. He doubled down on the word of God, absolute truth. He didn't deny it. That was the whole point. Okay? 
So brothers and sisters in Christ, one last time, for that study I did, real quick, we're going to finish this. It's the, the people are losing focus on what matters. It's not why, uh, who called them Christians, that's not what matters. That it's a derogatory term, that's not what matters. Because like I said, that's a circular argument. And you'll be sitting there arguing in a circle forever. And that's what Satan wants. The important thing is, is why they were called Christians. Why were they called Christians? Even if it was saved, why would the saved call them Christians? Why? Well, they were disciples, like in Christ Jesus, suffering for Jesus Christ. If it was a lost world, why? Why would the lost world dare to call them Christians? Because it's in Christ Jesus, he was a disciple of Jesus Christ, he was suffering for Jesus Christ. That's what matters, brothers and Christ. It's the why that matters, not the who. Okay, in this situation, and what we're talking about, it's not the who called them, it's why they were called Christians. Don't let people distract you from that. Don't. And make sure you're examining yourselves, brothers and Christ. Stay in this book. Like I said, there's times I make mistakes when I quote scripture, and I've got, I'm like, well, I need to get in this book more. It's, it's a good example of anybody, no matter how great they are. They're a great man of God. They've been preaching for 50 years. Anytime they misquote scripture, it means they need to get back in this book. They need to get back in this book. That brother that misquoted the scripture, they called them Christians first at, they called them Christians first at Antioch. It didn't say they, and he left out disciple. He needs to get back in this book. I misquote scriptures. I need to get back in this book. And I'm not saying if I do. I do. There's times I do. I still need to get in this book. So make sure you stay in this book, brothers and sisters of Christ. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. And I do want to quote some more because I didn't quote many verses in this, in this video. But thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Thy word is. Make sure you're not adding to it or subtracting from it.